It is time to once again touch on this important free-to-play topic. Welcome back to Cocky Gachas and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about all of the upcoming units and my personal opinions and thoughts on whether they are worth saving for. Because after all, when it comes to free-to-play, the most important question right, for a game like Reverse Night 99 is most importantly who to pull for, who to save for, given the fact that our limited currency is always bugging on my like Even for the upcoming event, right, the Golden Thread, a lot of people are thinking of skipping especially the free-to-play players because of the fact that we have so limited of this clear drops of this currency when it comes to free-to-play so the first character that we are going to touch on is going to be none other than Changling or Changeling because she is coming in a couple days I think that it is also important to include her since we are going to pit her against all of the future units up until 1.5 including the new ones like Ezra as well as Spatodia and for Changling I think that I would say that she is rather recommended and she's considered the plant type super hyper carry when it comes to all of the units future looking as well because she does extremely high DPS in general but also when you pair her up with poison supports that is when her limit gets broken and she does go one tier higher than general hyper carries with the poison support that she brings also noting the fact that with that poison team in general you are able to obtain a 100% Blasphemy of the Night uh, uptime and Blasphemy of the Night is one of those side that is rather difficult to trigger her upper limit when it comes to the damage is really really high of course a lot of people might still be wondering whether they should pull for Changling when it comes to her without poison support if you don't have units like Sotobi not planning to pull Kanjira are you still going to be able to go for Changling and my opinion is that you should be able to do so the damage wise of course we cannot compare it to the optimal scenarios but even at her like flaw state right when it comes to general limbo content when it comes to general U2 content she is the queen and also very very notably is that she is in fact a entire kit unlocked at P0 so a lot of units right you will see that like Charmaine when you have more portraits he is able to take on the role of DPS but at low portraits their capabilities are limited so the whole kit is not being unleashed however for Changling entire kit is already unleashed at P0 in fact I would say her portraits are not exactly the best when you compare to other units so for free to be players of course we are looking at P0 for all of the units that we're going to be touching on today so for that itself I think Changling is an optimal choice for a lot of people so what is the reason for people not going for Changling instead? So if you are focused on rates itself, I don't think Changling is going to be that good because Changling is focused around AoE. Her single target skill is high multiplier. Definitely, don't get me wrong, but it is not consistent given the fact that two of the skills are AoE, including the ultimate, but the single target is only one card, right? So you know that in this game, it depends on how many cards that you are able to use. Even if you have a strong single target card, you cannot use it all the time. You have to constantly shuffle for it if you want to constantly use it. So not consistent from that end compared to other units with ultimate that are single target so for rate wise not the best so if you're focused on rates maybe you don't want her but in general i say for most casual players the more casual you are the more that you are struggling with limbo the more you should pull for Changling. so she'll really really make your game that easy she'll trivialize it even though to me itself i think the game right now is in a quite easy state but in the future it might ramp up a bit more so for people that are struggling even now definitely pull for Changling. you are not going to regret it Moving on, next we are going to talk about the next unit upcoming after Chang, which is Shamin. And for Shamin, his rating I would give him is meat for a free-to-play player. And the reason is very simple. Shamin is a beast type debuffer supporting unit that deals reality damage. I think that as a sub DPS, he does qualify that. But at P0, his DPS capabilities are not the highest. And a lot of times people will compare him to Beacon that fulfills a similar debuffer DPS role. But personally, I think that Beacon is slightly better in my opinion, given the fact that portraits are easier to obtain for Beacon. So it's not exactly fair to compare P0 to P0. But at P0, I will say that Charmaine is slightly tankier. And the advantage of Charmaine is that he is more universal in the sense since he debuffs reality defense and also mental defense so on top of beacons uh, reality defense you're also going to get the mental defense element but honestly most people do not use a mixed team so usually people just go with single damage type team so for those team itself beacon is going to be better but the fact that he is beast type if you are lacking a bit of the beast dps right like you do not have Melania, you do not have Centurion, you need to fulfill a DPS role to obtain the 30% extra damage for Afflectus bonuses to help you get the 12th round clear, right? Definitely Shamin can be that help that you need 
So I would think that if you want to draw for Shaman, you are someone that lacks either Beacon or Beast type DPS. Shaman can be recommended if you're lacking more of that. So if you already have like Centurion or Melania in, also you have like Beacon or other debuffers, I don't really think that I would recommend Shaman. So that's why he's a mid tier. Moving on, I'm going to touch on the next one after Shaman, and that is going to be Black Dwarf. And for Black Dwarf, the rating I'll give her is recommended. Similar to Chang Li, I think that Black Dwarf is really, really recommended. And Black Dwarf is a mineral type hypo carry in a single target focus area, and she deals mental damage. And the key reason why Black Dwarf is recommended is because she really deals a lot of damage when it comes to single target, and also not to mention her AoE capabilities. So if you are thinking that hey, I already have Eternity, right? Black Dwarf wouldn't be as necessary. You are not too far from it. But at the same time, even though Black Dwarf has a single target ultimate, in fact, she does more AoE damage in a lot of scenarios according to the Celts, right? Compared to Eternity because of her very loaded hit with the planet. Um, there is a lot of the penetration going on. There is a lot of leech rate. So sustain wise, as well as damage wise, she does encompass everything. And at P0, we're not really looking at her to provide the Empower Incantation to herself, but more just with a follow-up attacks after she used her ultimate. It's already going to be extremely, extremely good. And at this point, if you're thinking, right, Black Dwarf is a unit that is very complicated and you don't want to play a complicated unit, I would tell you and assure you that at P0, you just have to play her normally. If you need AoE cuts, just use AoE cuts. If you need single target DPS, just do single target DPS. There is not too much of a DPS as loss when you consider just playing her normally right although there is more of the optimal setups or optimal rotations that she can encompass but even at just playing her normally she is not clunky at all her kit is very very decent and then you also have to look at her ability like i mentioned since she is really really good as a single target dps she's going to be recommended for rates and for rates itself the marsh rate is her recommended rate to tackle a lot of the teams that have triple S, if you're focusing on that, right, do require you to have BD, to have Black Dwarf. And even outside of the rates, right, you're looking at her at Limbo content, YouTube content, she does excel a lot. So I would consider her really, really recommended for people that are first lacking a mineral hyper carry. And secondly, even if you have Eternity, you're looking to excel in rates, I think that Black Dwarf might just be the carry for you. Now, moving on to our numbers patch, which is patch 1.4. This is going to bring to us two notable units. The first one is going to be 37 and the second one is going to be 6. Let's first touch on 37. So with 37, 37 is a star type mental damage user. However, her kit revolves around the Genesis attack as well. And she is the first Genesis user that can crit with her Genesis attack. And for her rating, I would say she is mid to recommended. Not exactly the most recommended depending on the circumstances, especially at P0. And the reason why I say this is because at P0, her kit, right, her Genesis damage is really, really minuscule. It's really not that notable at all from a damage standpoint. And her Eureka system, right, it's not exactly the best when it consider P0. Not enough generations to really make it such that she's able to uh, complete a lot of follow-ups with her Eureka system. So this is something that I do think is lacking at P0. But the main reason why I would even put her in the recommended area is because if you are really focused on rates, I highly recommend you to pull 37 given the fact that I've never really seen that many P0 clears without 37. Most of the P0 clears I've seen are with 37. If not, the person probably tried a hundred times, uh, a lot of times to actually get triple S for the C Serpent Rate, which is arguably until now for the 4 rates, I consider it the most difficult rate. I'm also going to make a video on rates and the recommended units, but for now, just think of it as a rate exclusive 37 pool. If you're really focused on rates, then I would say definitely go for 37, given the fact that I predict the C Serpent Rate is going to rerun for 3 patches. But of course, if you are a free to play that is more concerned with just clearing Limbo and U2, right? Compared to Changling, she is definitely not even close. Changling is so much better than her when it comes to general purpose use. So do not even consider them in the same tier when it comes to general content. She is just rate focused. But at the same time, her usage for that particular rate is so good that there is little replacement for her role in that rate. So this is why I consider her mid to recommended. If you're really focused on rates, definitely go for her. Otherwise, Sea Serpent Triple S might just be saying goodbye to you. Now moving on, next is going to be 6. So for 6, I would say that his rating is from recommended to highly recommended, depending on what you're focused on. So this is one of the 
highly recommended character since Two Fairy. I'm not touching on Two Fairy since the Two Fairy banner has already dropped. But if you're wondering, Two Fairy and Six are two of the new releases that I really consider very, very strong. And Six is an intellect type mental damage user. But of course, at P0, we consider him a buffer. Okay, buffer the buffer role at P0 because his damage is really tied to his ultimate and at the lower portraits, you really want to optimize his Eureka usage on the buffing aspect. So more of a supporting role. However, when it comes to supporting, right, you can consider him the most AP generous support outside of Two Fairy. And the reason is very simple, because just like Two Fairy, he has the passive aspects of applying buffs whereby he's able to apply buff at every start of the turn to random allies and in 4-man battle that means applying buffs to all 4 units right so in more man battles of course you're going to have more benefits from this passive reward this passive buff that he gets every single round at the start of it so also from the AP generous aspect right uh, for people that don't understand what AP generous means I see people asking it from time to time it just means that you do not have to act you do not have to use a cut of that character for them to have a benefit or impact on the team and in this case since it is passive it means that there is less card usage on his end to provide buffs to the team itself and also notably on his buff he has this buff that is able to cleanse which is very very valuable given the fact that outside of two fairy right now there are no six star units that cleanse the only other unit that cleanse is john title so limited characters can cleanse adding one more to your team might be great as well of course for a lot of content that do not need cleanse itself you might be thinking not as good sure but the buff aspect also come with the eureka bonus whereby you are able to upgrade the levels of the target that you buff which is previously exclusive to only anali as a support when it comes to upgrading uh, her own cuts which is not the cuts of the target but we can use the sharper mechanics to get someone else's cut so similar in the end and also people do compare Ananli to uh, 6 as well so if you have Ananli and you're looking at 6 hey do I really need 6 the answer to that is debatable I would say that it's still recommended for you to get 6 since you can run 2 supports on the team it doesn't really clash that much from the end and also the fact is for 6 itself he is battle in 4 man battles compared to um, Anali while Anali is battle in 3 man battles so there are different requirements from the end right if you're only focused on 3 man content and you're asking in the future are there all just 4 man content I would say that right now there is still a lot of 3 man content so if you're not focused on raids for instance um, there are some event stages that are 4-man content but those are relatively easy so I wouldn't really consider it mandatory to pull for that. Even though you are not focused on raids, right, I would still suggest you to pick him up as one of the top picks given the fact that in the future maybe we will go towards more of that and if you were to miss it, right, you have to wait for 3 patches before you get him again. Next is going to be Spatodia as well as Isra. So these two units are our new units in 1.5. So first talking about Spatodia. Spatodia for her rating, I would say is mid to recommended. In fact, I will lean a bit more towards the recommended side. Depending on whether you have replacement, she is a 6 star beast type reality DPS and she does have a bit of the Genesis component. However, I wouldn't say it is a big part. So with her arrival, she introduced a new mechanic or new negative status called the burn, which reduces healing as well as similar to poison, but except the fact that it is dealing damage based on the units, the opponent's attack. So it is not based on your own attack. Her ability to deal a lot, a lot of damage in the right conditions with the right supports. And what I mean by that is she requires burn stacks to be very, very high and for that she needs a burn support and the only one that we have right now right, is with her release in 1.5 is with Yulu so Yulu is the burn support but with a 5 star unit in Yulu Yulu isn't exactly the best outside of providing burn support so that is why right I don't think that this team itself relying on Yulu as a burn support is going to be that great so I would just consider her by herself without the burn aspect right now because to confidently to consistently trigger 15 stacks you probably can't do it and at p0 another aspect that you have to consider is going to be crit support because her crit rate by herself is not that high at p0 so she needs a crit support in the likes of 
um, two fairy which of course is a good unit to use in it in herself so definitely this benefits um running her with spatodia and it's not that detrimental as compared to running yulu with spatodia to utilize the burn aspect so think of think of the burn aspect as more of a bonus damage instead of triggering additional conditions on spatodia because it's very very hard to trigger that consistently and i'm going to consider just that but even then you might be thinking hey she needs so much help right why is she recommended so i would say that she is recommended because of one of the underrated aspects that people do not talk about and that is her ability to generate action cards her own first skill can be generated right when she uses her buff card so for that itself right this is very very underrated given the fact that people just think of it as an additional card but this additional card increases her chance of getting a natural fuse when it comes to natural fuse right it means that first you're going to get an additional um two star card second is also the muxi aspect you can think of her also having a muxi gain like melania which is having a muxi gain but that is controlled muxi gain this is random muxi gain right so really just to uh, amplify more on her attack damage which is a very very strong single target um burst dps so really i think that spatodia right um, at P0 can already rival the other beast DPS albeit I would say that I would still prefer Melania given the fact that she is more consistent but right now we only have one burn support so we are considering it as of current 1.5 patch but of course with a new unit they are trying to like raise the stock as much as possible so meaning in the future patches I do expect that there is going to be more burn support coming in and if there's a really strong 6 star unit with burn support that runs with Spatodia there is potential for her to outweigh uh, the other beast type afflictors dps this is why i think she runs from mid to recommended and more recommended if you do not have a beast dps definitely she can replace uh the two of the other beast hyper carries when it comes to doing single damage um just a bit lacking on the aoe front but still very very good and lastly we're going to have isra and for isra i will confidently tell you that her rating is not recommended for free to play okay for whales potentially you can have fun with her but for free to play players she is the weakest newest release out of everyone i've seen from 1.1 until 1.5 okay weakest banan first she is a star type shielder buffer kind of a unit and the reason why i would say that i completely don't recommend him is because he is really really weak and has a clunky kit so if you're already weak right you at least have a comfortable kit for people to use but for him itself it's not that he has a very clunky kit with the mushroom system whereby you really have to have an optimized rotation to use him at a acceptable stage uh, people will say that shielders are good because they help you increase the survivability i'm not going to argue against that because for raids itself i've seen him being used in the sea serpent raid to decent effect but at the same time he's easily replaceable with other units right he's not like mandatory for the raid and the problem with his shield is that the shield only lasts one freaking round and not to mention the shield cannot stack the problem with a one round shield and a shield that cannot stack means that if you use the two cards you have two of these cards right optimally the choice is for you to move the cards to use it as a two star instead of a one star which means clearing cards in general is going to be a bit more difficult and also the fact that you cannot have this shoe more than one round right if you look at him and tenon the same problem the one round shoe is also one of the main reasons why i don't like tenon at all although the shoe also comes with a like a reduced damage aspect right but it only lasts for one round what can it do it doesn't really do that much so from a sustain standpoint ezra cannot function as a sustain without healer so you cannot replace healers which means it takes the slot of either a sub dps or a support and most support these days also do decent dps in think about like uh six think about like an unli uh think about like pickles so all of this supports do good dps but for isra his dps aspect is close to new okay close to zero very very bad from the counts that i have seen the portraits wise also do not help him at all right even if you are looking just at p0 you also have to consider if you get lucky and get p1 get p2 is he useful portraits absolutely worse portrait 3 does help his dpm aspects i think it's 30 percent increase from dpm for one portrait you might think it's very good but of course uh 100 of one is only one okay so like to have a high percentage of a low number which is his dps number is not good at all third aspect is the buffing debuffing aspect which might be the saving grace but even then not the best the ceiling is higher than beacon 
the floor is much lower than Beacon, not consistent at all. And the reason why is because of his stupid mushrooms. So his mushrooms mechanic, right, kind of is very counterintuitive, very clunky when you consider that the ultimate, right, is something that uh, matures all of the mushrooms. So the mushrooms have growth cycle. You think of it as activating after a few rounds. However, the ultimate would mature it instantly. So if you use the ultimate, right, when your mushrooms are almost close to maturing, Effectively, you are not doing much for the maturing of the uh, mushrooms. And the second thing I want to also mention is going to be the debuffing is stacks based. When you think of the beacon debuff, right, it is not stacks based. It is based on the turn base, meaning that you can have as many attacks as possible, as many follow up attacks, and they will not take up the damage stacks. However, for Isra, his debuffs are stack based. If you have a follow up attack, Basically, you use up one stack. So really depends on what cards you use after the um, debuff itself being applied on the opponent. So it really involves a lot of micromanagement. And even if you micromanage, it is not that good. So the benefit is not that high. Ceiling is not that high. When given the fact that you can just press one button on Beacon, have a effective debuff that is not as clunky as this whole Isra system that is going on with the stupid mushrooms, right? So only good thing about him is that he has a mushroom on his head, okay? That is the only good thing I can think of. So really, really bad character. For free to play, I highly recommend you guys to skip, okay? Do not, do not plan to pull for uh, Isra unless you really find that uh, the appeal if from him is the mushroom, okay? If you like the mushroom, draw for him all you want. But for people that are thinking of having a character that is useful for uh, effective clearing content, Isra is not one of those units. Now before I end the video, there is one more concept that I want to bring across and that is putting particular emphasis to banners from 1.4 and onwards because right for this banners itself a lot of people do not consider something and that is the introduction of all units into the standard pool so for 1.4 you are going to see right once 1.4 come out you're going to see pickles and melania into the banner which means right it is going to effectively have a higher chance of you getting a new unit a useful new unit in that sense if you pull on the banners 1.4 and beyond so this might be something to consider if you are pulling for 37 potentially your 50 50 if you lose it you might get a melania which is really good unit and even for portraits is very good and pickles which is a top tier support that you might have skipped because you went for either melania or you have been saving for two fairy so 1.4 on there is the effect for 1.5 spartodia as well as isra Pulling on those banners would mean that you have now four new units. You have Melania, Pickles, and also have the 1.2, which is very highly favored, the two fairy as well as Changling. So if you already have Changling, maybe this is not as good because the portraits for Changling is not that good. But if you do not have or you skip Changling, right? Potentially 1.5 Spartodio might be something that you can consider, especially if you do not have a beast type. I wouldn't say it's exactly a driving force for me wanting to pull on the future banners from 1.4 onwards, but it is something to consider when it comes to losing 50-50, you might have a bonus aspect when coming to getting a decent unit that you have potentially skipped in the past. Now, of course, when talking about pulling for banners, right, there is a bonus event banner that I mentioned just now in the start of the video, the Golden Thread Banner. So if you're interested to see whether I recommend people to actually draw for it definitely check out this video i'll see you guys over there this is cocky gachas signing